Hey everyone, Duke Nougat 3D here, and happy Halloween! I have for you something here that is both unexpected, both to me and potentially to my viewers, because what I have here is something that is not a mask intended to filter toxins, uh, vapors, mists, odors, dust, etc. in the air, but rather to change the ambient temperature, because what I have here is the Southwind cold weather respirator. Uh, I'd like to go on a limb and say that I did not buy this myself. I did not have anyone willingly express to me that they were buying this for me. I don't know who sent it to me, although I have a very strong inkling on who it was and whoever it was if it is who I think it is. Thank you again for sending this. This is kind of a very weird piece of respiratory protection. I don't even know if you could call this protection because it doesn't really protect against anything except the cold air. But um, nevertheless, thank you again for this. I handled one of these back at uh, Moulage's place and it was a very weird but fascinating design and I kind of became mildly enthralled with it and I guess he found a really cheap one and given the condition it was originally and I would assume this would have had to have been very cheap but nevertheless welcome uh and I'm very happy to say I own one of these now because they're they're bloody fucking interesting so the whole purpose behind this mask but actually before I get into that I should mention that these were made by the Gentex Corporation and yes the same Gentex Corporation that made the CVC helmets, flight helmets, and other miscellaneous combat headwear protective equipment for the US military and others so kind of a weird thing considering that you have a, uh, a government and law enforcement contractor making snow masks so what these ba essentially do is it's just a basic ordinary cup mask that has a series of aluminum mesh inside and the idea is that this that your exhaled air going in and out of the mesh um, that mesh will trap a certain degree of temperature given that aluminum is very reactive to changing temperatures and then any inhaled air will be warmed up and transferred by the aluminum and the air will be basically non uh, nippy as it reaches your, uh, your your tender tender breathing bits so Let's get into the details of the kit here. So it comes in this nice little aesthetic yellow and blue box. I like these colors. Uh, you have a nice little window on, on the front there made out of cheap cellophane to see what you are getting. The respirator is patent design patented, so not patent pending. And it offers the most luxurious and enthralling activities for the harsh wintry outdoors, such as snowing your lawn, sitting three feet apart on a snowmobile because you're not gay, and many other like things. And on the back you have a brief description. The Southwind cold weather respirator is designed to provide comfort during all cold weather activities. Its unique design allows it to efficiently trap warmth and moisture from exhaled breath and to use this heat and moisture to warm and humidify air paint splatter, which is inhaled, excellent for respiratory discomfort due to inhaling cold air. For best results, don the respirator well indoors. No therapeutic... Yeah. No therapeutic claims are intended to or implied. That aside, it seems to be very effective, and I have not uh, yet worn it out in the cold, but uh, it certainly does its job at warming your breath, so I can at least assure that it functions on that level. It comes with a small manual leaflet showing a brief uh, layout of the design and its operating principles. You get three pictures. You get a, it was really not too much to this. It's Again, it's no complex parts. It's just a silicone face piece and... Uh, plastic insert that holds a bunch of aluminum mesh panels. Uh, this one is interesting though because unlike the one that Moulage owns, the, on his, the aluminum mesh is one continuous strip which is folded over a dozen times and this one just has a whole shit ton of individually cut rectangular aluminum mesh pieces inside. Um, this one, the paper on this one is dated 1971 so that's the rough estimate of when I can assume that these were around from, from the 70s, maybe into the 80s, possible early 90s. Who knows? Not really a lot of documentation on these. So moving that out of the way, we can see that the um, the head strap, which was originally made out of a gum rubber material, is in a bit of disrepair. I don't know if I, when or if I'll be able to replace this considering it used a dot fastener. Uh, not really dot, I don't know what type of fastener this is. It's smaller than what I know uh, how to work with, and the the absolute galaxy brain genius who owned this fine uh, mask in the past thought it would be a good idea to secure the strap in place by puncturing the face piece with a nail, which I promptly removed, but the remnants of the holes are still there, unfortunately, but not that it really matters, because you don't need this mask to seal perfectly, it's not protecting you against uh, cyanogen chloride or some shit, it's just a cold weather mask. Um, on the bottom here, you can see the Gentex logo, 
um, Carbondale, Pennsylvania, USA, part number WW10. -W or WW10. And uh, you, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there is remnants of attempted restoration to remove the discoloration of this, which is why I always say never to attempt any of my restoration methods for yourself because you don't know what you're gonna do. And in this case, because the face piece is made out of silicone, acetone was somewhat damaging to it and I luckily stopped myself before any of the uh, the smearing got any got significant enough to be damaging to the face piece. So as you can see, the, the mask is fairly discolored. It was well caked in grime when I originally got it. I guess you could call it the sludge wind respirator at that point, but I cleaned it the best I could using water, soap, hydrogen peroxide, because obviously acetone is just going to eat through the damn thing. Um, but as you can see, it has two um, fasteners for the harness strap and really not, again, not much to it. Just a a channel inside here that uh, has that allows the aluminum mesh to uh, transpire and your breath to go in and out through that. Um, and obviously a plastic insert which holds it in place, which I probably will pull out in a second here, but I'm not going to remove the individual strips because there's a lot of them and they are a bitch to get back in and out. Um, the respirator sits, this portion here sits just above the, uh, or just below the lower lip in between your chin and your lower lip. And obviously there is a small periphery which ends at the bridge of the nose for a more comfortable fit, given that this is not a very big respirator and it uh, just is meant to just sit on your lower lip and nose. Uh, not much to it. I'm kind of really over describing this thing for what it's worth, to be honest with you, but what the hell. Um, I will try and get this uh, assembly open here. It might be a little bit difficult, but I will try and do it. Here we go. It's starting to come. And taking that off, you can see all the little individual aluminum strips or aluminum mesh uh, strips inside, which are there's, I haven't counted how many there is, but there's a literal fuck ton of these just jam packed inside here, which makes it very efficient um, at its uh, purpose of defogging or not defogging, uh, warming your breath. And then you can see there's really nothing in there, but just a, a box with some holes in it, you know, so you can breathe. Um, but other than that, that's the Southwind respirator. I may actually, I'm actually kind of tempted to use this in actual life with it because uh, oddly enough, it gets cold here in the deep south sometimes. I don't know if many people know that happens, but apparently it does, at least to me. So that's about it. Again, thank you for sending this, whoever you are, and I'm sure I know who you are, but thank you again, and uh, have, hope you all have a happy Halloween. See you later.